Red Dice Diaries podcast, a rambling journey through the wonderful world of RPGs by a long-time GM and player. The music at the start of this podcast is Shinigami by Tarek, used under Creative Commons license. Just a short episode this time, and I'm going to be answering a couple of the voicemail messages that I've received. So, without further ado... Hey John, this is Tim Shorts from Gothridge Manor. Enjoyed your latest episode talking about how you organize your bullet journal. The here's the ironic thing with me: I, I've been doing bullet journaling for developing adventures for oh gosh, I don't know how many years now. But the ironic thing, or stupid thing, you know, however you want to call it, is when I take notes during the game, I don't do that, which would make perfect sense. So I could kind of keep track of important events or uh, NPCs or situations that are going on or maybe like a, a plot uh, detail that's sort of dangling in the air and I'm not sure where to go with it or something that needs to be developed. I think it would be helpful if I did do that. So maybe I got to start doing that this week. So thanks, John. Great uh, episode and uh, be listening. Thanks. Thanks for getting in touch, Tim. And yeah, I entirely sympathize with that. It's something that I have an issue with myself. Even though I've got the bullet journal, and I try and make notes during my session. When you're sort of in the flow of a game, and you're enjoying yourself, it's quite hard to sort of step back from that and actually think, oh yeah, actually I've got to make some notes in my, my journal or whatever method of recording you do. I mean, I, despite the fact I'm using the journal now, I still end up sort of like grabbing index cards and anything to hand and just scribbling bits and pieces down. And I'm trying to discipline myself at the minute to actually copy those notes up into the journal afterwards so they don't just get lost or misplaced as inevitably happens. One of the reasons I actually started recording my video, my my sessions and sort of streaming them, was actually, rather than having them as actual plays, was to for my benefit primarily, so that if I did forget something, I could listen to it back and I could use it to update my notes. And I found that really quite a useful tool. One of the things I'm potentially looking at now, because I've now got a, a, a sort of a, an extra bit for Audacity that allows me to just like rip the sound file out of a video, is putting the audio versions maybe up on my podcast or something. Because like a lot of people, I find it quite difficult to watch like a three hour video or whatever whereas if i'm sat down on my notebook i can easily have the the audio file on my phone put my headphones in update the notes as i listen to it so that, that's some of the ways i'm trying to sort of keep my my note taking up to date but yeah it can be a bit of a struggle to remember to do that during a game i entirely sympathize thanks very much tim for your call and i highly recommend anyone who's listening in to check out gothridge manor's podcast and here we go with our next call. Hello, John. This is Rob from Down in a Heap. Thanks for the uh, kind words and encouragement. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're my first caller, so that's uh, that's great. And I think you summed up my position better than I did. And to your point, yeah, I see that if a DM were to try and keep pushing that that strange envelope, I could see it. You know, they're trying to top themselves with each session. It would almost spiral out of control like some adrenaline junkie trying to outdo their, their last stunt. But um, I just recently found out you had a podcast after hearing you on with Colin Green doing a collaboration. And I had seen quite a few of your videos and enjoy them all. And I start listening a lot more to your podcast um, and look forward to seeing Behind the Walls. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks very much for getting in touch, Rob. I'm more than happy to be your first caller and I've enjoyed the episodes that you've put out so far. And I think you make an important point that it's very important for people producing podcasts, uh, YouTube videos, etc., to get feedback from people because it can feel a bit like you're sort of shouting into the void when it's just you beavering away on producing this content. So it's always nice to find out that people are actually listening and taking an interest in it. Now, I have to confess that I have fallen a little bit behind in my podcast listening, and I'm hoping to catch up on that soon. 
and when I do listen to an episode, I try and comment so that people know that I'm interested, even if it's just to say, really enjoy the episode. Thanks very much. At least in that, people know that you're listening. Glad you've enjoyed my podcasts and that you enjoyed the videos that I've put out. That's greatly appreciated. And also your comments on Behind the Walls. Glenn's been feverishly beavering away at it, getting it ready for release. I've seen an advanced copy of the final PDF, and he's done his normal grade A top class work for it. I only hope my relatively modest scribblings can stand up to the excellent work that he's putting in so hopefully people who read that when it comes out in the future in pdf and soft cover will let me know what they think of it i'm hoping it'll be the first in a a number of collaborations between myself and glenn and other freelance stuff that i'm going to be putting out so that's it for this episode thank you very much for all your calls and whatever game you're playing and wherever it is take care and enjoy yourselves <laughs>